Hey guys, it's Manda the CMA here again, of course. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I talk about anything and everything medical assisting and beyond. If you are a returning viewer and hopefully a subscriber, welcome back. Today we are talking about medical abbreviations just for charting. So these ones are very common. You will probably see them a lot if your clinic and if everyone that you work with loves abbreviations as much as I do. I'm just gonna do a voiceover for most of it. I found a chalkboard, which I didn't think that they were that rare, and they only had one at the store, so it was this one, and it was cute, so I mean, I was fine with that, but they only had, like, crazy chalk, like, they didn't have a normal Crayola box of chalk, like, you had to get, like, the super fancy one, so I guess that's what I've got for today, so I had to spend, like, way over what I should have. The last half of the video, what I'm planning to do today is to have a little test session. So I will hold up my chalkboard and I will have the medical abbreviation on there. You can just write that one down. So let's get started. Stay tuned. Here we go with some medical abbreviations for charting. Okay, so before we get started, I first wanted you guys to know that this chalkboard did not work very well at all. So I apologize that it's probably going to look really bad. Second of all, I did also want to let you guys know that some of these abbreviations, they have made it so that you should not use them during charting. Now the reason for that was because back in the day when we used to use paper charts, it was hard to tell with the doctor's scribble which one was supposed to be which. Since there are a couple of them, the, the only difference is, is capitalization, or maybe there's a slash mark, or a dot. It was very hard to tell if the physician was writing that or something else, and sometimes that was not a good thing. So the first one that we have is a C with a line over it. Now, if you guys know, there is one that has a W with a slash next to it. Try writing this one instead. It's actually a lot easier. This is what we use with medical charting, so this is what you should replace that one with. That one goes along with my next one here, which is an S with a line over it, and that is without. Both of them are very, very commonly used in the medical field, so it could be a CBC with or without platelets. You can use that there. there you can use it literally anywhere that you would use that word. Here we've got another obviously abbreviation. It is D slash T. That means due to, so maybe they have hypertension due to pain, which you can write it that way. This is super easy. Most of these are literally just a shorthand way of writing it. I love shorthand so much that this is, this is like awesome. I love this stuff. This one is R slash O, and that means rule out. So an example of when you would use that, patient is coming into clinic to rule out a urinary tract infection, so you'd write R-O, and then actually you could write U-T-I after that as well. There's so many abbreviations that I'll be teaching you guys, so R-O means rule out. This one is S slash P, and that means status post. The only time that I really ever see it used and when I use it is when somebody is post-op from a surgery. So I do actually use this one a lot. So patient is two weeks status post-op of a hysterectomy or arthroscopy, anything like that. That is when we use S slash P. Next up, we have follow up. So it's F slash U. I know it looks really funny, but it does not mean F U. It is F 
slash you and it means follow up. So if a patient is coming into clinic to follow up to their ER stay that they had yesterday, they are coming to follow up and that's when we would use F U. F slash U. Oops, sorry. So the next one is very common, not just in the medical field, but I've seen it other places too. It is Y slash O, so that means year or years old. This month is actually my birthday, so... The next one we have is SE, and that means side effect. So this would be if you were using a face gel or a face cream and you got a red face or a dryness. It could be anything like that. Or maybe you took a pill and it gave you nausea or vomiting, maybe some stomach cramping. All of that is considered a side effect. So there's SE, which is side effect. So the next one we have is DX, and that means diagnosis. So whatever the patient was diagnosed with, we would use DX if we were putting that in the chart anywhere. And then we've got RX, which is completely different even though it almost looks the same. This is for prescription. I'm sure you guys have seen this before anywhere on a prescription bottle or on a paper prescription. So the next one we have is ETOH. And I know you guys are probably thinking, what the heck does ETOH have to do with alcohol? But that is actually a chemistry abbreviation for alcohol. So alcohol consumption, ETOH abuse, that is when we would use that word. I actually use it quite a bit just because I don't know how to spell alcohol. <laughs> then we've got H slash O, which is a history of, so a history of diabetes. Patient presents today with a history of diabetes, here for a med check on their insulin. That may be a reason of why you would use HO. This one is TX, and that means treatment. So that talks about anything that we would be treating a patient for, or maybe they're currently being treated. So maybe their treatment is working, they're following up, maybe their treatment is not working. I guess I'm getting a little hungry here from doing my video, but that is TX. The next one we have is super long. So if you guys need to look at it a little bit longer, feel free to pause it. I had a really hard time writing this. So just so you guys know, right when I got done with this video, I ran to the craft store and got an actual pen chalk marker. So we've got HT is height, WT is weight, BP is blood pressure, P is pulse, and R is respirations. Pause it if you need to, guys. So those are the abbreviations that I have for you today that are most commonly used in charting. Now we've got a little quizlet here that you can take. So with this, I'll hold up a board with the abbreviation and you'll want to see if you can put the real meaning of it down below. If you do run into any problems or if you want to check your work afterwards, then you can just head right back to the beginning of the video and you'll be able to see that again. Don't forget to watch the end of my video. I have something exciting to tell you guys too. So hope you do good on the test. Good luck. Here you go.
All right, guys. Well, I think that's all for today. Hopefully you did well on the test. So I just wanted to let you guys know real quick that I am trying to partner with a little shop on Etsy that makes badge reels, the little clips that hold your badges. So they are super cute. I've had one of them for about a year now and I messaged her and she's totally on board. So keep your eyes out for that discount. I thought it would be a really cool one for you guys to have. If you guys have any questions, as always, make sure you leave them in the comments box below. I'll catch you in my next video and we'll see you then. Thanks guys.